Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome James Von Klemperer. Hello. Uh, I'm going to talk today about a project which, having heard this morning's conversation about Penn Station and very broad visionary plans about potential reshaping of that whole district, uh, I'll talk today about Manhattan's other transit hub about Grand Central Terminal and specifically about one project, which is one Vanderbilt Tower. The building, let's see if I can advance, is uh, situated on Vanderbilt Avenue in Madison, so it's uh, in 42nd Street right next to the terminal. And uh, it is to be, as it's been submitted and certified on Monday, city planning, and it's ULERP set, uh, Midtown's tallest tower. Um, so uh, uh, after the Freedom Tower, the tallest tower in Manhattan. Um, it is at the heart of the city, uh, although we think of it uh, as we work on the project also, uh, given its presence on the skyline, what's most important is the way it sits in the city and uh, beyond the, the massing of the tower and the sort of uh, imposing physical presence of it, its place in uh, growing from the infrastructure that leads us into the city. So to draw a quick distinction, between uh, New York and, for example, Paris, one could use London and other cities. The rail gateway into the cities, gateways, are not peripheral. They're not like injection plugs in an engine that lead to separate pistons. They come to the very heart of the city. And that changes the notion of uh, the, at the outset of this architectural challenge. So the, the metaphor or the analogy to the heart is probably a good one to use because I want to talk about the, briefly about the shared space between public and private and to say that the separation between buildings and circulation of people is nigh impossible to make in a complete sense. So it's a little bit like the Merchant of Venice where the pound of flesh and the pound of blood cannot be taken apart. It's a, it's a riddle, but it presents tremendous opportunities. The density, which you see on the right-hand side, this was a, a map that was made during the East Midtown discussions, that zoning proposal, which fell by the wayside at the end of the Bloomberg administration, but still, the premise that the place where we arrive by rail and public tr other public transport should be the place where we put our workplaces, the places of commerce, et cetera. So uh, again, to extend the analogy of the heart, the four chamber, new chambers being made, uh, this was a, about a year old image of the east side access, uh, railway lines which will double the peak hour rail capacity and flow through Grand Central Terminal is a tremendous qualifier and redefiner for this district. And so the density, uh, excuse me, yeah, there we go, the density of uh, the station itself and all of the various tunnels, passageways, and connections to the subway system will be challenged in a way that we haven't yet experienced. Uh, this may not happen until we we're told perhaps 2017, 20, 27, we're not sure, but it will come. And best if, if the arteries are there before the heart starts pumping all of this extra passage uh, of people through the zone. So what you see here in yellow is the, the site of this project. It is a high rise office building, uh, the most dense kind of building that we know given the FAR, which is uh, we hope to be granted a FAR 30. Uh, so stacks of, of many floors of office building will somehow have to respond to and should take advantage of its space at ground to overlap with and serve the public use. Uh, so the, the Warren and Wetmore building somehow prefigured some of these issues in its layering of many different uses from rail to uh, at the bottom to tennis court and, and others uh, at the top and much in between. And so this building, which you can see now at its base in this cartoon or this diagram, proliferates both in section and in plan the extension of commuter public use uh, transit space so that it becomes almost a Grand Central Terminal West. And uh, we talk about public and private space and uh, uh, privately owned public space. This really goes beyond to a public-private partnership, whether that's a legal distinction or uh, an operational and design distinction, it's both, and I, I won't get into the legal intricacies, but the high rise in a way can be seen of, of marking the gateway as it did here in Piazza San Marco, but with a rather inert building of a Campanile, 
uh, to a building which might look to today's development in a number of uh, quite advanced high rises. This one, as you know, Richard Rogers Leaden Hall or Cheese Grater Building in the heart of the city of London to lift the building up to the advantage of making public space. But in this case, not public space which is used just for rest, it's place of movement. And so the kind of injection flow, the plugging in of the building to the spaces underground becomes essential as uh, perhaps illustrated in, in a whimsical way in Ron Heron's archigram drawing. So we see then how from 90 feet below grade, we can come up directly into a building which will then serve within its property line by a series of financial and uh, legal agreements of a $210 million grant from the uh, developer SL Green to the city, to the MTA, to run inside the building. So this was prefigured a little bit in R.V. Wiley Corbett's drawing, uh, close to 100 years old, where uh, the, the line between uh, public and private was blurred. So that the ramping systems that come up through Grand Central Terminal, which define the architecture and the function of that building, are brought into this piece of architecture, not only into its conveyance systems of escalators, walkways, elevators, but also into the architectural expression of a building which scissors, lifts, and, and creates a kind of diagonal response to what we know to be inside Grand Central Terminal. And as Fred talked about just now, the issue of confronting a monument, perhaps with another monument, uh, but an, uh, an open building or a transparent building next to a closed volume, this would be the uh, space in between that would be shared by the two buildings, a new public plaza. And so we see this sort of uh, 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 corner where an actual public train hall will be embedded within the building. This will be, uh, again, owned in a way of the ground by the developer, but used uh, in perpetuity by the public. And in the end, now just finished to take you up to the top of the building, the building is viewed as permeable, as open, and is used by, a, a, in a sense, a public group, not only at its base, but at the top with direct access to a series of halls for a kind of, if you will, uh, a rainbow room uh, for the future. And that will define the kind of structure at the top of this building. So that's all I have time for, but I hope that uh, uh, you'll be able to learn more of the building and about the building and, and walk through it in uh, three, four years, five years. Thank you.